Welcome to the Dorky Readings and Bloopers, featuring Blood Phoenix Rebirth, first book of the Broken World series. Chapter 3 I'd been conscious in the darkness of death, and my essence flittered away without my consent, leaving me empty. Life slammed into me. My back curled off the softness beneath me, and bits of vitality returned, making my limbs jerk. A warm hand on my cheek opened my eyes. James smoothed the hair from my face. The relief etched into his features made my stomach and chest hot. Fight re-entered my body, power housing me as I grabbed him and propelled us both across the floor. My legs fit astride his, handed his throat, and teeth bared. A strange and piercing pain racked my gums as I bent over him. You tried to kill me. The new life in me, the new fight, mixed a strange concoction in my veins. I felt predatory. Hunger seared through me. I bent and struck at his throat. His blood, the sweet taste of strawberry candies, attacked the burning of my body. Somewhere inside myself I screamed with horror. He'd made me a cannibal, infected me with rabies. Yet every fiber of my being, even the small terror-ridden voice, knew how natural this felt. How right. The connection didn't last. James shoved me off him, pinning me to the floor, and I snapped at him. My blood isn't going to do you any good, Rhea. Not with the hunger you have, so control yourself. A new beast inside me whined at the thought of control, of having to wait. I snapped at him again. My jaw and teeth throbbed with the beating of his pulse. Control. His command made me hazy. And for the sake of the gods, if you bite me again, you better make it pleasant. My next demonstration will doubly hurt. How the hell am I supposed to bite you pleasantly? My voice grew hoarse. Had I screamed in the agony of dying? Of waking? Just keep it in mind next time. Although, I prefer you avoid it altogether. It does little for you and merely damages me. I yanked at my arms and writhed under him, searching for a way to escape his hold. Fine. Got it. Don't hurt the psychopath that tried to kill me and infected me with some bizarre case of mad cow. Mad cow? He eased his hold on me. I sat up, nearing his throat again. It made my jaw ache. Hey. Control. James said as if he saw my struggle. But it hurts, and you... It helped. Why did I want his blood? I mean, other than the obvious anger for whatever he did to me. Why do I want it? It made you like me. He reached to curl my hair behind my ear. A familiar gesture I could get used to, but not this time. I slapped his hand away. What are you, besides a kidnapping psychopath? Rhea, you're smart enough to have figured it out. Your mother did, not long after I'd met her. I froze. You're a lying bastard. There is no way you could have known my mom. I didn't know my mom. Your Grammy took a picture of me with your mother as she held you. No. Not my mom. Not the one thing I've wanted my entire life. God, he was a monster, playing games with me. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. I covered my ears as he explained, falling back onto the floor. The pain in my jaw and gums receded to the overwhelming loss of my entire family, the mother and father I never knew, and my now-dead grandparents who raised me. I had no aunts or uncles or cousins. The only person in the world I had left was Ari, and this bastard took me from her. I refused to cry. I would not lose her. I'd kill everyone who stood in my way. Slowly, I discovered James had left. I suppose my fit turned him off. Good. I sat up. The clarity with which I saw the living room surprised me. My night vision had never been desirable, but now I saw every fiber in the brown rug and every crack of the condemned home. Shards of the street lights slipped through the boarded windows. Finding my feet proved that my body grew more balanced, if not strong. Could rabies do that? I didn't have a craving for flesh, in fact. The notion nauseated me. My new vision unfocused to the steady pulse around the corner. The scent of a rustic tavern. Oak. Oh. An iron sliced through my gut like a sword. James returned, carrying a young black man whose blood dripped down the side of his own face. James wasn't a big guy, but the effort didn't seem to strain him. He dumped his victim on the floor with a thud. The man groaned. Saliva flooded my mouth and the ache sliced through my gums again. I attacked, pressing against the bulk of the man. My mouth found the hot and bloody vein, feeding my madness, my new disease. He tasted like a dark ale, almost burnt, but the undercurrent of life lay in his blood. Thumping vibrated against my chest, his heart, fast but steady, and I drank until that thumping pulse stuttered, paused, and crashed. 
With sharpened vision, my gaze found the ashen skin of the black man below me, and I scrambled off of him, squealing in terror at the death in his eyes. I killed a man. What type of monster have you turned me into? Fear weakened my voice. You already know the answer. My hand lifted to my mouth, touching the two long and delicate curves that fell sharply from my gums. My mind screamed for an explanation. My body still quivered under an unfathomable need. Who was he? Does it matter? My stomach hollowed, so cold and consuming, sucking me in. Yes, it does. But it didn't. He was already dead. I killed him. My chest rattled and I struggled for breath. Teeth. Blood. A craving so deep and dark that it consumed me. Still the hunger burned across my middle. An awe-inspiring dread filled me. Chapter 3 <clears throat> <clears throat> Life slammed into me. I'd been conscious in the death, deathness of dark, in the deathness of dark. Slife, slice, slife. Life slammed into me, you know. Fine, got it. Don't hurt the psychopath that tried to kill me and infected me with some bizarre, bizarre, bizarre. Yeah. Stock much?